space is occupied in the office of the Deputy President, Honorable Cyril Ramaphosa, who is also the chairperson of South African National AIDS Council, SAC. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, this commitment and will is very well spelled out in the founding objectives of SANAC, amongst which is included the following statement, and I quote, to advise government on HIV and AIDS, TB and STI policy and strategy and related matters, to mobilize resources domestically and internationally, to finance the response to HIV, TB, and sexually transmitted infections, including but not limited, to estimating expenditure and resource needs, and to ensure the monitoring of progress against the target set in the national strategic plan." Unquote. This commitment by government is based on a number of principles, most important of which is the constitutionally derived principles of human rights of individuals and communities. These principles are founded on the values of human dignity, the achievement of equality, and the advancement of human rights and freedoms as stated in the founding provisions of our Constitution. Honorable members, one such overriding right is the right to life as enshrined in our Constitution's Bill of Rights. This, amongst other related rights, must for our purposes here always be read with the right to have access to health care, where the responsibility of the state is to take reasonable legislative and other measures within its available resources to achieve the progressive realization of each of these rights. The other way that the state on its own cannot win this war on these pandemics and of course epidemics unless all of society is brought on board to work together with the state to find sustainable solutions. We believe that this forum is such an avenue which the broadest of stakeholders' relations have been structured to strengthen government's resolve to eradicate the pandemic and its impact that have both social and economic impacts, some of which are expressed in the growth of child-headed families. Furthermore, South Africa is also party to international efforts that have been designed to fight the scale of these people of pandemics. Fellow South Africans, the United Nations has since 2015 expanded on the original statement of the Sustainable Development Goals and has called for action to specifically bring about an end to the pandemic of AIDS and TB. Among some of the goals conceived is to address the social and structural drivers of HIV, TB, and STI infections, and that is goal number four. To ground the response to HIV, TB, and STIs in human rights principles and approaches, and that is goal number five. To mobilize resources to support the achievement of NSP goals and ensure sustainable responses, and that is goal number seven and of course to strengthen strategic information and research to drive progress towards achievement of NSP goals, which is of course goal number eight. These are but a few of the goals elucidated in the United Nations program. It must be mentioned, however, that in these policies and programs, the South African government, led by the African National Congress, has a long-term view that seeks to redress the very causal factors that underpin the spread of these pandemics. This long-term approach is captured in the National Development Plan, amongst others. In 2012, and thus ahead of the United Nations pronouncements on these pandemics, the African National Congress-led government announced its National Development Plan Vision 2030, in which it seeks to accelerate social and economic development. In this program, government makes the following recommendations about the perspectives from which we must assess South Africa's health system. And these are, one, the demographics and health, that is trends in demography, vital statistics, and the burden of diseases, specific mobility and uh, mobility and mortality. 
to health systems, that is issues such as health finance, workforce, infrastructure, information, technology, and governance. This provides insight into the capacity of the health system to respond to challenges presented in the first perspective. And of course, the environmental social determinants perspective that involve the social and ecological determinants of health, including climate change and global trends. The National Development Plan goes, in fact, it goes on to make the following points about our vision of 2030 to health, and I quote, the generation of under 20s is largely free, free of HIV. This is what we say in 2030. The quadruple burden of diseases has been radically reduced compared to the two previous decades, with an infant mortality rate of less than 20 deaths per thousand life births and an under five mortality rate of less than 30 per thousand. This has been significant, significant shift in, in equity, efficiency, effectiveness, and quality of healthcare provisions. Universal coverage is now available, we will say, the risks posed by the social determinants of disease and adverse ecological factors have been reduced significantly, unquote. It is concluded in this regard that these aspirations will be achievable if the major problems currently existing in three perspectives are addressed effectively. It is stated further as part of this vision that to monitor progress, health authorities should set mid-term targets towards the 2030 objectives. And I think this forum is going to assist us to achieve just that. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to calls for radical reduction of HIV by 2030, the National Development Plan also makes strong calls for the drastic reduction of TB. In, it can therefore be understood that while social and economic development is critical for South Africa, given the triple challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment in which we are currently trapped, it remains equally vital for us to be vigilant to the unintended consequences that always accompany development. A much in-depth examination of the transport sector will show that the different modes provide different contexts and different health threats, and each mode should thus be given specific attention. Not only roads, transport, but all modes. Ladies and gentlemen, greater regional cooperation and greater economic development potential across the South, the African region, and beyond means that drivers of trucks, buses, taxis, and trains will travel a lot across our borders, and that similarly will have greater numbers of drivers from within this region who will pass through our borders on long and tiring trips, which will involve more stops and more sleepovers. In fact, this is bound to affect all modes of transport and carries its own potential for the spread of diseases. It also carries the potential for many from all modes of transport who are on treatment to skip treatment because it cannot be fetched on time. It is important to view this from the point of view of families that are broken apart by the introduction of the diseases within families especially poor families where there is a single breadwinner, father or husband or son, mother or wife or daughter who gets affected and is forced to leave work for home-based care. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to be also aware of large programs in the form of Operation Pakisa Ocean's Economy which is poised to see a huge injection of people and work in infrastructure projects, seafaring and other marine-based works that might have a great influence in the spread of the pandemics. This also means we may see greater expansion of informal port economies and greater interactions between people. This trend is also bound to see women and men travel for long 
through seafaring expeditions that will see them not only away for long, but might also be marked by incidents of gender violence, especially rapes. The rape sector has, through Prasa and Transnet, embarked on projects of refurbishment of rolling stock and expansion of rail networks that are also bound to attract great numbers of working people. Women are vulnerable to sexual violence, especially due to the remoteness of their workstations at certain given times over the course of projects. Equally so, most men and women at such projects might be migrant and may thus have left families and wives or husbands behind only to return at certain intervals of the project. At times, some of these men and women will have to come back home for good because of illness that due to the remoteness of workstations could not be attended to with regular treatment. Growth of the economy and our drive to reduce the number of road users will see many people move to trains and buses because this is our objective. This also might increase overcrowding in many of these trains and buses, producing a conducive environment for the spread of communicable diseases, particularly uh, TB. Because the aviation sector has taken to our call to transform the sector by including more women in its staff contingent across companies, and also given the lack of aviation medical practitioners that deal with communicable illnesses, it might be difficult for many women to access advice and treatment on their long haul journeys across the world. On the other hand, it is important to note the sheer absence of contraceptives, especially condoms in our aircrafts. This situation cannot be allowed to continue because we must treat all public modes of transport equally, be they aviation, be they maritime, be they road transport they must be given equal attention. This also applies to all our vessels where all seafarers must be encouraged to use condoms. This therefore leads us to the most important problem or issue that is the availability of condoms in these modes of transport. Also, it includes the flexible way of ensuring that these people access treatment and of course, they access follow-up examinations. These are some of the potential consequences of the radical, fast-paced social and economic development we foresee. Thus, it becomes important that we are able to develop research methodologies and focus that shall be able to clearly define the extent of vulnerability of groups and individuals. We must be clear about the extent of spread of infections and also understand the extent of cause and effect among all groups observed. Research must also show what impact certain public transport vehicles designs will have in the spread of communicable diseases and what can be done to mitigate such. As I conclude, Program Director, our strategy has to ensure the prevention of spread of these pandemics, ensure early detection and of course ensure early treatment and of course effective treatment but also the prevention of complications. Those that shall implement this transport NSP must carry within them the same spirit of Oliver Tambo that he carried and be as, as, as far-sighted as he was about the change that we have today. From this workshop, we must be able to produce a much clearer NSP that will include all the modes of transport in its analysis and recommendations. These recommendations must in turn be based on clearly stipulated timeframes with clearly specified resources in resource inputs that shall be needed to effective, for effective implementation of resolutions and recommendations that shall come out of this workshop. I wish you well in all your efforts at these workshops and hope that by the end of the workshops we will have a working NSP and op an operation plan ready for implementation and amenable to implementation by the different branches, entities and of course provinces of in, within the transport sector. 
As I welcome you to this workshop, I therefore formally declare this transport sector HIV and AIDS TV Forum Workshop 2017 officially opened. And I thank you.